Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at a consolidation problem. We will go over this consolidation problem step by step. Then you might see a similar consolidation problem in your advanced accounting courses or you might see something similar on a smaller scale on the CPA exam as a simulation or from this problem I can generate, I can derive 10 to 15 MCQs for the CPA or the CMA exam. So once you know the basics, and I'm, as I'm going through the problem, I will tell you, for example, they could ask you about specifically this point or that point or this entry. So it's very important that you understand the basics in order to answer the questions, whether they are exercises, simulations, multiple choice CPA or CMA exam. So in this problem we are looking at a subsidiary this is the book value of the subsidiary as of the purchase date this is the subsidiary fair value we have the assets starting with current assets the parent company paid for this company 900,000 and purchased 100% of the company so we paid 100 we pay, we purchased 100% of the company the sub declared and paid $40,000 in dividend the sub earned 100,000 in net income so what we will do in this session we will go over this example looking at the consolidation entries we would look at the elimination entries we would look at the whole process from a to z Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our advanced accounting course is best for online students and students who are taking advanced accounting courses. We cover the equity method, consolidation, intercompany transaction, variable interest entity, interim reporting, foreign currency transaction, and translation, as well as hedging. Our comprehensive course includes lectures as well as multiple choice questions. Go ahead and start your free trial today. No obligation. We are here to help. Your success starts here. So when we buy a subsidiary, when the parent company buy a subsidiary, what do they do? They would look at their book value and they compare that to their fair value. Well, what's the book value? What's the fair value? The book value is how much this asset from an accounting perspective is worth on the books. For example, their current assets are worth 320 and the fair value, it means if they want to sell this asset or liquidate this asset, they will get exactly 320. Therefore, there's no difference to account for. The, what we say is the difference for current asset is zero because there is no difference. Current, uh, the current asset book value and fair value are the same. Well, let's take a look at the trademark. The trademark is worth on the books 200,000. The trademark fair value, if they want to sell it separately, it's worth 220. What can we say? There's an access value, ac uh, fair value and access of the books, $20,000 more. The Fair value is $20,000 more. Now we have to account for this separately. Why do we have to account for this separately? Because when we buy the company, we purchase this as far as we're concerned. If we paid for it 220, then we should record that 220. Therefore, we have to add an additional $20,000 in asset. Now, if this asset, is, if this asset is subject to any amortization or depreciation, we also have to account for this. Now, but for this trademark, you see, it's an indefinite life. Therefore, there's no depreciation or amortization to be specific related to this intangible asset trademark. Now, what the parent company would start to do, they would start to create a table, and they will they would say, okay, we have to add twenty thousand dollar of trademark assets. And the annual access amortization, we're not going to amortize it because it's an indefinite asset. The amortization is zero. We keep on going. There's a patent in technology. It has a remaining life of 10 years. The book value of that technology is 320. The fair value is 450. Is there an access of fair value over the book value? Yes, it's $130,000. And this Patented technology has a remaining life of 10 years. It means we are going to amortize it over how long? 
10 years and every year we are going to take 13,000 now also what the parent company would do they will add that they will put down they'll have to add an asset called patent and technology of 120 this is the 100% acquisition of sub company the access amortization schedule and they will have to amortize this over 10 years this 130 every year 13,000 then the equipment, the book value is 180, the fair value is 150. So notice here, there is excess book value over fair value. What does that mean? It means we have to reduce our asset by how much? 30,000. What do we mean by reduce the asset is once you purchase this equipment, you have to bring it down to 150. Therefore, as a result, you are going to be saving on your depreciation. And if it has a five year remaining, if we divide this by five, and that's going to be a negative think of it as a negative depreciation basically a negative depreciation that's basically what it is we have to reduce our assets by 30,000 and our depreciation expense by 6,000 again we'll go down to this schedule we put equipment negative 30,000 amortizing this asset over five years every year we'll take a negative depreciation of 6 thousand if we look at current liabilities 420 and 420 there is no difference then we figure out the difference between the book value and the fair value now the next thing we are going to look at is what we are going to compute the net book value or the yeah, well the book value of the asset or net book value or the equity of the asset what do you do how do you compute this or net asset you will take assets of the company total assets of the company minus liabilities so if we add up all the total assets if we add them up they add up to how much let's see 320 plus 200,000 uh, that's 520 they add up the sum is 1 million and 20 minus the liabilities of 420 so assets minus liabilities will give us a book value of 600,000. Again, what do we call this book value? Net book value, the equity of the company, or the net asset. It go by those three names. So I just want to make sure in case your course or CPA course compute this differently. It, name it something else. We'll do the same thing for the fair value. It's the assets at fair value minus the liabilities at fair value will give us the net fair value of this of this company which is 720 now also the equity should equal to the equity account of the subsidiary which is the common stock 200,000 negatives means those balances are credit additional paid in capital is 20 retained earnings is 380 if we add them up the equity should be 600,000 I already showed you that assets minus liabilities equal to equity of 600,000 now the first thing I want to tell you is when we consolidate the parent and the sub the equity of the sub don't appear anywhere those has to be gone and that's the first thing we do during the during the uh, consolidation process now uh, one more thing we want to do is see how much we paid for this asset how much did we pay for this asset we pay for this asset 900,000 this is how much we paid of this 900,000 what did we do we purchased the book value of the asset well what's the book value of the asset the book value of the assets were 600,000 therefore of the 600 of the 900,000 600,000 will be kind of think you're allocating the 600,000 what did you buy so this is the 900,000 you bought 600,000 worth of book value but you paid more well what did I what else did I pay extra for well I know what I paid extra for I paid extra for the trademark I paid extra for the patent and I kind of I underpaid for the equipment because the fair value is less so of the 900,000 I'd allocate I would allocate 600,000 to the uh, uh, to the book value then I'm gonna allocate I also paid 20,000 for the patent that's an additional 20,000 100 uh, for the uh, trademark 130,000 for the patent and I basically kind of saved 30,000 saved 30,000 on 
the equipment so all in all if I take 600,000 uh, I'm sorry if I take 900,000 well let's do it step by step if I take 900 minus 600 first I'll get 300,000 then if I take the 300,000 reduce it by the patent 20 reduce it by the uh, patented technology 130 the trademark 20 then add the depreciation what I'm left with is 180,000 so what I did I took the 900,000 and said okay I of the 900,000 600,000 went to the book value of the asset free and clear that says should not free and clear should be pretty straightforward now I have remainings of the 900,000 I have remaining of 300,000 how is that 300,000 allocated I have to allocate it to the additional asset that I purchased well some of them were you know worth less but I have to allocate the 300 to 120 to 130 and negative 30 what I'm left with is 180 there's nothing I can identify in this company no identifiable asset that I can allocate this 182 well if there's nothing to be allocated to what do we call this an excess of net fair value so we we took the money we allocated to everything that we can allocate it identifiable asset what's left is something that's unidentifiable we call it good will therefore we have to add an additional asset when we consolidate and that asset is called goodwill goodwill for a gap is not amortized therefore it has an indefinite life so the question could be they could ask you compute goodwill now if I would I would be computing goodwill I would not go over this computation how this is how I would compute goodwill if I paid 900,000 and the fair value of all identifiable asset is 720 what I'm left with is 180 so what I paid minus the net book value at fair value of because and in the net book value of fair value it it lists all the fair value of the identifiable asset and anything left if I cannot allocate it to anything I have to call it goodwill and goodwill is not identifiable so that's something they could ask you now also what they could ask you is what is the excess amortization because you purchase this company because you purchase this company you have additional asset and those assets are sub subject to in quote depreciation but we call it excess amortization because you purchase the asset well the patented trademark seven thirteen thousand per year you have to book an additional amortization then the equipment this is unusual it's a negative expense therefore the net annual amortization 7,000 and keep track of this just make a note of this so where did the 7,000 came from the the 7,000 additional amortization the parent company will have to book because they have more assets so overall obviously they have more assets 130 is greater than you know 30 so we have more assets therefore we're gonna have to book additional amorti amortization now let's look at the journal entries uh, this is when we bought the company we created the schedule but let's when we bought the company we have to kind of book what we did we paid nine hundred thousand dollar for this company therefore we debit investment in sub company nine hundred thousand credit cash nine hundred thousand this is when we purchase this company obviously if we purchase a company we have to book the book the transaction and the transaction is we purchase an investment and that investment on one one is worth one one x two is worth we paid 900 900,000 now the subsidiary declared dividend and then they paid it on August 1st of that year of year X2 and when they declare the dividend we debit dividend receivable and we credit investment and in sub because basically what happened is they are paying us money from our own investment therefore our investment goes down and we expect to receive the money then eventually the dividend receivable is gone when we get paid we debit cash credit receivable so basically what it end up with is debit cash and reduce the investment so we reduce our investment so remember when we started this investment we started this investment at 900,000 now we reduce it by 40,000 because we received dividend so yes we reduce the investment but we get the cash therefore if I ask you what is the value of the investment as of this date you would say the value is eight hundred and sixty thousand are we done yet no the company earned one hundred thousand therefore this earning because 
we own 100%, we have to increase our investment by 100% of the earnings, happen to be 100,000. We debit investment and we credit the equity in sub earning. Credit means it's going up because it's a revenue. So we debit the investment, credit the revenue account, and our investment now is increased by 100,000. Our investment is up to 960. Are we done yet? Not at all. Remember what we have to do. We have to amortize an additional 7,000. Therefore, what we do is we, since we have to amortize, we have additional expenses, we have to debit equity and sub earning, basically reduce it because of the expense of 7,000 and reduce the investment as well. Therefore, we could reduce the investment 7,000, 7,000. And what does that mean? It means 953 was the balance in the investment account. So throughout the year, we keep track of the investment account. And basically, this is a from a T account. This is the investment account. It started at 900,000. We declared dividend. We, we got the income. Then we did the excess amortization. The the ending balance is 953,000. This is the investment account. So just keep, you're going to see this in part two on the second slide, but this is what we have to do throughout the year when we purchase the, when we purchase the investment, got the dividend, record the income, and record the excess amortization. Now I'm going to go to the Excel sheet and now ignore, there's a lot of numbers here. So ignore them. Matter of fact, let me hide them. This is easier for you to, to look at them step by step. And I'm going to go over what we have here because now what we have to do, we have to do the consolidation. So what you are giving here is, let me just hide them for now so it doesn't create havoc for you. Um, what you are looking at here is the income statement of the parent company and in the income statement of the sub then we're going to have to prepare consolidated entries to get the consolidated number, which is which the consolidated number, the final number. This is the consolidated financial statement. We have to arrive to that level, the consolidated financial statement. So how do we do this? Well, the first thing we have to do, the first thing I have to tell you, remember, is we have to eliminate the equity account of the subsidiary. Remember what I told you, the equity account of the subsidiary has to be gone. But before we do that, before we do that, let's take a look at what we are given in the problem. It's good to know. It's good to, to be able to read. So the parent company, we have revenue of 1.5 million. Remember, those negatives are credit. The subsidiary's revenue, 400,000. Cost of goods sold, 700. The sub, 232. Amortization expense, 120, 32. Depreciation, 80, 36. Equity in the subsidiary earning is 93. Now, where did that 93 came from? Remember on the priors um, on the first Excel sheet uh, on the first part of the Excel sheet, I said the company earned a hundred thousand. So our equity in sub went up, then our equity in sub went down. So one hundred thousand in income. Then we have to book excess amortization because we took on the additional asset. So our our equity in sub earning is is what is 93,000 and this is where the 93,000 are is coming from which is interrelated the uh, revenue from a uh, net basically the income from the subsidiary it goes to us okay so hopefully so far we are following what do we need to do next the first thing we are going to do is eliminate the equity eliminate the equity of the sub what are the equity of the sub the equity of the sub are the retained earnings which is 380,000 is the additional paid in capital and common stock so let me just go over the balance sheet maybe let's go over the statement of retained earning and the balance sheet retained earning of the parent company this is the parent company column is 840 now remember at the end of the day the only thing that's going to survive is the parent retained earning and the parent equity. So retained earning as the beginning, 840, net income from above, 6, 6, 693, and dividend declared by the parent, 120, retained earning is 1,413,000. I'm telling you right now, that's what's going to survive. The only thing that's going to survive is 
the retained earnings of the company. So if on the CPA exam you're stuck, just put everything in the retained earnings and you will be you will be fine. Current assets, this is the parent, this is the sub. Current assets, 940. The sub is half a million. Investment in sub equity, 953. And I'm sure you know where the 953 came from because that could be also a question. What's the investment account? 953. Now remember, and not remember, the investment account, once we consolidate, it has to be gone. It has to be zero. And I'll explain why. I'm just telling you what's going to be happening. The trademark for the parent, the trademark for the sub, patent and technology, equipment. There's no goodwill yet. Remember, we created goodwill. So we're going to have to add the goodwill. We'll do it shortly. Here are the liabilities and here are the equity account. So the first thing we do is we eliminate the equity of the subsidiary. So how do we eliminate the equity? Think about what we purchased. We purchased the company. Well, if we purchased the company, well, we have an investment account, but we purchased their equity. Therefore, we have to eliminate their equity against our investment. What does that mean? It means we have to debit the common stock of the company, debit their additional paid in capital, and debit the retained earning, and credit the investment. Why? Because if we purchase the company, well, we purchased their equity. They cannot. The, the equity and the investment cannot be, uh, cannot exist together. Therefore, what we do is we are going to debit these accounts. We're going to debit, debit, two hundred thousand, debit, twenty thousand, and debit, three hundred and eighty thousand. And what do we credit? We are going to credit investment. And why? Why do we do this? We do this to to do what? To eliminate the sub equity. So that's the first step. We eliminate the sub equity. And we explained more about this in the prior session. Now, since we eliminated the beginning retained earning, if we take 840 um, plus 380 minus 380, what's going to survive? You guessed at 840. So I'm starting to build this. So 840 will survive here. Now, same thing here. Uh, let me let me take out this common stock six hundred thousand plus tw plus tw two hundred thousand credit minus the debit. What I'm left with is six hundred thousand. Same thing for additional paid in capital. One twenty. One twenty is the my equity plus the sub equity, which is twenty minus the adjustment twenty. 20 when what I'm left with is 120 so all what's left is only the parent equity so you have to know this the only thing that survive in the consolidation is the parent company this is an important concept on the CPA exam they try to trick you a lot what's the ending balance of equity the parent company the parent common stock the parent a pick and the parent retained earnings some of you might be wondering uh, why did I credit this 993 this is not 9993 uh, what I credit the investment is only 600,000 but there's more credit that's coming just that's it's gonna be a total of 993 just hold on that so I credit the investment only for now 600,000 and I credited the investment account now what else do I need to do well here's the next thing you need to do you remember when we went through this access amortization schedule we said we need to add and deduct for that matter which is unusual we need to add and deduct some assets so the next thing we are going to do we are going to add those assets the trademark the patent goodwill and reduce the equipment so that's the next thing you do you want to because remember if you bought the assets you still have invest the investment on the books you cannot have the investment on the books and you cannot have the asset because the investment on the books is a financial asset it's the financial asset that you are keeping track of but once you need to consolidate you need to put the actual asset on the books once you put the actual asset like the building the vehicle the trademark the patent and technology the equipment you have to remove the investment so now what do I need to do I need to put my assets on the books so the first thing I'm going to do I'm gonna add under the consolidation entries here, I'm going to debit my trademark because I need to add 20,000. That's a debit. I need to add to my patent and technology 130. Unfortunately, I need to reduce some of my equipment, 
by 30,000. And remember, I need to put the new account that's called Goodwill of 80,000. Usually it's you debit all the assets for some reason, this piece of equipment, it's, it's worth less, I have to reduce it. Therefore, that's a debit, a debit, a debit, and that's a credit. And where do I close these accounts? I'm going to close these accounts to the investment account. And that's the credit will be $300,000 this $300,000 there you see it right here the 300,000 so remember I credited at first 600 then I credited now 300,000 let me show you the journal entry this is the journal entry to adjust assets to fair value because now I have the I'm putting the assets on the consolidated financial statements well guess what if that's the case I need to remove the investment so I put the assets remove the investment and I had to reduce one of the assets I had to reduce one of the assets so let me see if I can get you some numbers done for example the trademark here what's going to be the ending balance um, we'll compute this toward the end so what else do we have to do after we put the assets on the books well let's eliminate let's eliminate the equity income Remember, this 93,000 is what? This 93,000 is intercompany income. What do I have to do? I have to eliminate inter intercompany income. So I debit, I debit this account, and where do I credit? I credit my investment. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce it through my investment. Remember, this is equity income. It reduces my investment, and this is the third, the third, the third credit. 93,000 so first it's for the 600,000 to remove the equity the 300,000 to put the asset adjust the assets the fair value the new assets and the 93,000 to remove the equity so this is where the 993 coming from let me write it up 600k for the equity 300k was adjusting the value of the assets and 93 to eliminate the equity income so I debit, equity, credit, investment. Am I done yet? One more thing I have to do, I have to eliminate the dividend declared because that's also intercompany dividend. Remember, there's $40,000 of dividend declared and that's coming to me. It's an intercompany dividend. It's taking the money from this pocket to the other pocket. I have to reduce it. I have to take it out. Therefore, what do I have to do? I have to credit dividend $40,000. Okay, now what's going to happen is what's left is 120. What's left in net income, it's going to be what's coming from above. We're going to see in a moment, but let me show you. Now let's start the consolidation. Let's start the consolidation process. The parent, the parent revenue is 1.5 million. The subsidiary, because I pretty much finished everything except one entry. Once we get to it, we'll take. Oh well, let's let's do one more entry. Uh, the other thing that I have to account for after I remove the dividend is I have to book the additional amortization expense and book the less of expense of depreciation expense so what do I have to do I have to book an additional depreciation amortization expense of 13,000 and I have to reduce my depreciation expense by 6,000 because I took more less of as less less of equipment and what do I what do I book them against? I book them against the equipment and the patent and technology. I book them against the equipment. I'm going to debit the equipment to increase the equipment. And am I going to credit credit the patent and technology? Because what I need to do, I need to amortize this 130 over 10 years. So every year I do 13,000. Now the book value of this goes down. And then eventually this will go down to zero after 10 years years now let's go through the whole consolidation process I'm done with all the entries starting with revenues the parent company 1.5 million the subsidiary is 400,000 there's no adjustments if there's any adjustments at some point you might have to but 1.9 million in net income my cost of goods sold 700,000 plus 232 no adjustment to cost of goods sold 932 well, you will see later you have to make adjustments amortization expense 120 for the parent company 32 for the sub and I had to book an additional 13,000 therefore 165 depreciation expense 8,000 for the parent 36 for the sub because I bought the sub I have less depreciation of 6,000 therefore it should be 110 and the equity and the sub this is intercompany it should go down to zero now I can compute my consolidated net income and once I compute my consolidated net income I can bring it down to my consolidated retained earnings 
because this is I have 840 of beginning retained earning consolidated plus plus net income of 693 minus the dividend of 120 equal to retained earning of 1 million four hundred and one million four hundred and thirteen and what did I tell you at the beginning the only thing that's going to survive is the parent equity 1,414,000 and let's finish this and let's bring it down here we're done with the all equity so the only thing in the equity that survived notice it's the parent equity the only thing that survived in the consolidated column let's keep going current assets 940 uh, 940,000 I gotta bring this down this is the investment account 940 plus half a million no other adjustments is 1,440,000 uh, no, oh, I, I skipped the transaction. When I credited um, dividend, I debit the investment because this is what we did earlier. You remember on this slide, we debited the, uh, we credited the investment to reduce the investment. So let me go back here, investment and sub. So now if I take 953 plus 40,000, which is nine 993, minus the credit of 993 what's left in the investment account zero as i told you the investment account will be zero trademark 600,000 plus 200 plus an additional 20 trademark trademark is 820 patent and technology 370 plus 288 plus 130 minus the excess amortization of 13 that's going to give me 775 equipment of 250 my equipment the sub equipment is 220 I'm gonna add 6,000 of negative depreciation, then reduce it by 30, which is gonna give me a consolidated equipment of 446. I did not have goodwill in the consolidation. I'll have 180,000 of goodwill. And that's gonna give me a total asset of 3 million, uh, 3,481,000, my total asset. Let's keep going with the liabilities. Liabilities, 980. The parent, then the sub is 368. No, no adjustments. Therefore, the ending is 1,334,000. And we have all the equity. Now let's add liabilities plus equity, and they should equal to assets 3,481,000 of liabilities and equity equal to 3,481,000 of assets. Good. Again, this is a comprehensive consolidation problem. Uh, would they give you something on the in, on the CPA exam, something like this? I, I doubt it. Let me give you, if it is, it will be less accounts, um, very consolidated, <laughs> a quote unquote, very small. Um, but you might be asked about what should be the investment account, the consolidated investment account, zero. What should survive at the end? Only the parent equity account. Those things they might ask you in a multiple choice or you might have to compute given a CPA exam simulation and now what should you do now you want to go to Farhat lectures look at additional resources lectures problems multiple choice AI CPA questions CMA questions that's going to help you whether you are preparing for your CPA exam CMA exam taking an advanced accounting course it doesn't matter which textbook where, where in the world you are taking this course, we can help you. Invest in yourself. Farhat is always here to help.